Welcome once more to the hallowed halls of our Grand Library. Today our tale takes us into the depths of history, where we shall uncover the secrets of Winterspring. Winterspring is a snowy valley located in the northern corner of Kalimdor. It lies east of Felwood, northeast of Mount Hygel, and north of Azara. This serene corner of Kalimdor holds numerous secrets, drawing adventurers from all over the world to come and explore its mysteries. The goblin trading post of Everluck, ancient night elf ruins, and the expansive cave of Mazdarel, the home of the blue dragonflight on Kalimdor, all make Winterspring a destination of great interest. The picturesque landscape is inhabited by a variety of creatures, including yetis, frost sabers, and the spirits of the highborn, all of which reflect the rich history of those who once thrived in this region. Our exploration of Winterspring transports us to an era predating Azeroth's Great Sundering, over 10,000 years ago when the continents formed a single supercontinent known as Kalimdor, a time when the night elf civilization dominated the lands. Nestled in the northwestern expanse of Kalimdor stood the grand night elven city of Keltharil, once the residence of the Highborn. These night elves were referred to as the Queldori, translating to children of noble birth in Darnassian. The Highborn, an elite faction within this ancient night elf civilization, comprised of the favoured followers of Queen Azara. Despite this grandeur of the ancient Night Elf Empire, certain segments of the race often faced a significant downfall, the insatiable thirst for power. In their pursuit of total control over these lands, a faction of Highborn journeyed from their city of Keltharil, situated in what we now recognise as Winterspring, to the neighbouring city of Eldorath, in a region that would later be known as Azara. Within Eldorath, the Keltharil Highborn stole a crystal from the Temple of Zinmalor, a sacred place dedicated to their goddess Elune. The crystal, also known as the Crystal of Zinmalor, was a potent relic with the ability to harness and control formidable arcane energies. Although much remains unknown about the crystal, it is said that its possessor could wield extraordinary arcane power, granted they were deemed truly worthy. Upon the return of the Keltharil Highborn to their city with the crystal, the temptation of its arcane control proved irresistible. When tampered with, the crystal shattered, bringing a curse upon the Highborn of Keltharil and plunging the city's inhabitants into a period of anguish. This heedless manipulation of power would of course foreshadow the events that unfolded thereafter. The Highborn's increasingly reckless embrace of magic under the guidance of their queen would have dire consequences. Their investigations into the magical lake known as the Well of Eternity caused disturbances across the great dark beyond. The resulting disruptions in the Twisting Nether drew the attention of the nefarious forces of the Burning Legion to Azeroth, and ultimately sparking the War of the Ancients. We won't delve into the complexity of the War of the Ancients in this narrative, we are going to focus solely on the aspects that are relevant to Winterspring. In the final confrontation between Malfurion Stormrage and Queen Azara's forces, Malfurion harnessed the power of a relic known as the Dragon Soul, also known as the Demon Soul. This act managed to disrupt the meticulously woven spells of the Highborn, severing the connection between the Legion and Azeroth. The result was instability within the Well of Eternity, setting off a cataclysmic chain reaction that forever sundered the world. As the aftershocks reverberated through the land, the seas surged to fill the colossal void left by the well's implosion. Nearly 80% of Kalimdor was shattered, leaving only fragmented continents encircling the turbulent new sea. Kel'Thoril, like many other places, fell victim to the devastation of the Sundering and was submerged beneath the waters. The city of Kel'Thoril was transformed into a lake during the Sundering and subsequently froze over in the following years. While some remnants of the city's pillars protrude above the waterline, a substantial part remained submerged and encased in ice. The lake that now sits on top of it, Lake Keltharil, is now the largest body of water in Winterspring, and harbours the lingering spirits of the Highborn who met their demise during these historic events. The involvement in the War of the Ancients, of course, extends beyond the Night Elves, as the Blue Dragons were among the first to recognise the potential threat posed by the Burning Legion. When the Earth Aspect, Neltharion, proposed the creation of a magical artefact known as the Demon Soul, or the Dragon Soul, to combat the demons, the Blue Dragonflight swiftly embraced the idea. Maligos, the Aspect of the Blue Dragonflight, and a close friend and supporter of Neltharion, contributed a significant portion of his essence to forge the Dragon Soul. While the intricate details of Neltharion's betrayal and the Dragon Soul's dark saga deserve a dedicated account, in summary, Neltharion turned the artifact against the other Dragonflights. He had been driven mad and corrupted by the Old Gods, a fact unbeknownst to the other aspects. The devastating power of the Dragon Soul was unleashed upon the Blue Dragonflight, 
instantly claiming the lives of nearly all its members. As the remaining dragons prepared to retaliate, Neltharion withdrew, leaving the once proud blue dragonflight shattered. The other dragonflights retreated, seeking seclusion to recover from the repercussions of the dragon soul, but the damage to the draconic race proved irreparable. Although the legion was defeated by the combined efforts of the Kaldori and their allies, Azeroth still suffered, sundered by the destructive betrayal of Deathwing. Following the loss of his offspring and his mates, Malagos, overwhelmed by guilt for convincing the other aspects to infuse their powers into the Dragon Soul, secluded himself in his lair at Koldara for thousands of years, succumbing to madness. However, he did make one last rational decision. He placed his surviving Dragonkin in the caverns of Mazdaril, a cave system situated in central Winterspring. There they were tasked with the eternal vigilance over the sacred site of Mount Hyjal, home to the World Tree Nordrasil and the second Well of Eternity. The Blue Dragonflight maintained a presence within these caves in Winterspring for millennia to come. The responsibility of guarding Mazdaril fell upon Harle, a dragon who held the esteemed title of Matron Protectorate of the Blue Dragon Lair. Harle, characterised by her studious nature, took pleasure in literature and texts. She eagerly delved into any fragment of knowledge or trivia that crossed her path, renowned for her ability to assume different forms and to seamlessly integrate into other societies. Harle favoured the guise of a female high elf. As was common among blue dragons, she maintained a peaceful demeanour but staunchly defended her territorial domain. Harla commanded four formidable drakes entrusted with the protection of Mazdaril. Spellmore, Manaclaw, Scryer and Azurus all bestowed the task of protecting Mazdaril. General Colbaton, a distinguished leader of the Blue Flight, was also observed in the proximity of Mazdaril, adding an extra layer of vigilance to the layer's defences. Following the devastating events of the Great Sundering, the frozen expanse of Winterspring entered an era of serene stillness that endured for thousands of years. Only in more recent times, approximately 70 years before the opening of the Dark Portal on Azeroth, or a century before the Cataclysm and the resurgence of Deathwing, did the whispers of the Crystal of Zimmalor's potent powers echo across the world once again. Attracted by these rumours, a group of High Elves, led by Archmage Manias, journeyed from Quel'Thalos to Winterspring in pursuit of the elusive crystal. When they arrived, they discovered the crystal's shattered remnants, akin to the fate of the Highborn millennia before. They too became spectral echoes wandering among the ruins. Advancing through time from the ancient tales of the Great Sundering 10,000 years ago, we arrive at the events of the Alliance and Horde conflicts following the opening of the Dark Portal. Approximately four years after the Second War, the goblin city of Gadgetzan had already taken root in Tenaris on Kalimdor attracting the attention of the renowned human explorer and sailor Graydon Thorn, Confirming that the goblins had an influence over the lands of Kalimdor, the goblins swiftly expanded their reach, establishing key locations. The goblin town of Ratchet emerged on the eastern shore in the northern barrens, and the venture company wreaked havoc in the Stone Teller Mountains, a saga that is accessible through a secure portal in the tale description below. Relevant to our narrative, their ventures extended to what seemed to be the very edge of Kalimdor. Upon their arrival, the goblins of the Steamweedle Cartel promptly erected a trading post in the heart of Winterspring, known today as Everlock. Situated on the east side of Winterspring, it stands as the sole major goblin outpost in northern Kalimdor and serves multiple functions. Primarily, it acts as an operational hub for goblin miners extracting thorium and arcanite, as Winterspring boasts some of the few untapped veins of these materials on the continent. Secondarily, it operates as a pivotal trade centre open to all races and factions. Generally, both factions coexist relatively peacefully within its confines. A decade after the goblins established their settlements on Kalimdor, the Third War erupted across Azeroth, thrusting the Night Elves into the throes of conflict. Their once undisturbed land now faced the ravages of war, with the undead, the Burning Legion, humans and orcs all descending upon Kalimdor. Tyrande Whisperwind, along with her Night Elf Sentinels, engaged in a desperate struggle to safeguard their cherished homeland. Under the weight of the Orcish Horde's influence, the Night Elves suffered a severe blow when the Demigod of the Groves and the Lord of the Forest, Cenarius, fell to demonically corrupted orcs led by Grom Hellscream. With Cenarius' demise, the Night Elves' only resource was to awaken the Druids. After retrieving the potent relic that is Cenarius' horn from Moonglade, Tyrande roused the mighty druid and her lover, Malfurion Stormrage. Together, they ventured to the Barrow Dens within Winterspring to awaken the druids of the Talon, a group that specialised in information gathering and intelligence. 
These druids had the ability to transform into storm crows, soaring over the battlefield to scout and relay orders to distant troops. Their magical spell-like powers could manipulate the very winds to combat Kalimdor's adversaries. By creating ferocious cyclones, the druids of the Talon could sow chaos among enemy lines. Having completed their tasks in Winterspring, Tyranda and Malfurion proceeded to the Barrow Deeps and the southern base of Mount Hygel to awaken the Druids of the Claw from their slumber. Without delving into the intricate details of the Third War, a tale well known to many, alongside the newfound alliance between the humans and the orcs at Stone Talon Peak, Malfurion and Tyranda led the Night Elves in the conflict. Together they all emerged victorious against the Burning Legion, with a historic triumph at the Battle of Mount Hygel. Following the victory at the Battle of Mount Hygel, Winter Spring once more embraced a period of tranquility. While the world recovered from the repercussions of the Third War, one race exhibited an unyielding spirit, showing no inclination to pause and reflect. The Goblins. The denizens of Everluck continued their relentless pursuits, amassing untold riches in this snowy expanse. The prosperity of Everluck attracted a surge of adventurers into Winter Spring in the 25th year following the opening of the Dark Portal. This development was welcomed by the Everluck locals, as they could utilise the new adventurers to aid them in their quest to confront the threat posed by the demons of Dark Whisper Gorge. This refuge became the sanctuary for the surviving remnants of the Burning Legion following the demise of Archimonde in the climatic events of the Third War. To this very day, Everluck serves as a frequent stop and resupply point for pilgrims embarking on a journey through Winterspring to the Hygel Summit. The town of Everluck also plays host to the Thorian Brotherhood, a group of self-assured Dark Irons who assert their supremacy as the finest smiths in existence. Under the leadership of Malifus Darkhammer, the Brotherhood peddles their Thorium goods at exorbitant prices. During a visit to Everluck, Bran Bronzebeard contemplated revealing his superior craftsmanship, but ultimately dismissed the notion as a futile endeavour. He urged others to follow suit, attaching a catalogue highlighting the ludicrous prices and subpar wares offered by Malifus. The goblins in Everluck recently uncovered a new mine south of their city, located not far from the dragon caves of Mazdorel. Rich in Arcanine, this mine has proven elusive thus far. While distinct from the Blue Dragon's cave complex, the goblins, ever resourceful, seek adventurers willing to negotiate with the territorial Blue Dragonflight for access to the mine in exchange for a generous reward. Discussing rewards, the goblins of Everluck are renowned for dispatching adventurers into the wilds of Winterspring, enticing them with the prospect of gold, armour and knowledge upon accomplishing the requested tasks. These goblins are notorious for employing adventurers to undertake various assignments such as eliminating yetis, assisting in engineering endeavours, gathering the horns of the Chillwind Chimera, and even delving into Felwood for scientific exploration. With the increased influx of adventurers to the region 25 years after the events of the Dark Portal, reports of other settlements began to circulate worldwide. Among the first mentioned is Starfall Village, where adventurers can learn about the tales surrounding the Crystal of Zimmalor and the Highborn of the ancient city of Keltharil. Another village, Winterfall Village, located on the eastern edge of Winterspring, gained attention for being inhabited by corrupted firbolgs that instilled terror into the area. It's worth noting that the Winterfall firbolgs aren't the only firbolgs that occupy Winterspring. Pausing our exploration of the tales within Winterspring, let us redirect our focus back to the era of the War of the Ancients. As the corruption of the Burning Legion infiltrated the sacred forests of Kalimdor, the initially gentle creatures of the wild were the first to bear the brunt of its monstrous power. Once relatively docile animals transformed into abominable frenzied killers, their flesh torn and their spirits desecrated, swiftly succumbing to the demonic influence of the Burning Legion. Subsequently, the Firbolgs, the ursine denizens of the forest fell victim to the same fate, their entire species driven mad by the surrounding corruption. Yet, amidst the chaos and the madness, one Firbolg tribe managed to escape the darkness that had befallen Kalimdor. Taking refuge in Timbermore Hold, a tunnel system that runs beneath the mountains connecting Felwood, Moonglade and of course Winterspring. In these tunnels, the Timbermore tribe weathered the storm, witnessing helplessly as the once beloved forest transformed into a twisted, festering perversion of its former self. When the spirits of the forests fell silent, the Timbermore tribe understood that their home was lost, and perhaps it was lost forever. And thus the deceased forest earned the name Felwood. With the defeat of the Burning Legion, the Timbermore Firbolgs cautiously ventured outside the safety of their hold, 
Wary of all strangers, they feared being mistaken for their corrupted brethren and attacked. Though lacking in precious jewels or worldly riches, the Timbermore held strong to their shamanistic traditions. Proficient in crafting armours from animal hides, they gladly shared their healing talismans with friends of their tribe. The Timbermore's primary concerns centred on ending their corrupted brethren's suffering and seeking a cure to heal the wounds inflicted by Felwood's corruption. As previously noted, these fur bulgs are cautious of travellers, so tread with kindness or your journey to winter spring may be your last. In the aftermath of the Cataclysm and the resurgence of Deathwing, Winterspring appeared at a superficial level to have weathered the dragon's devastation. However, there were some alterations in the region that demand attention. Post Cataclysm, the Twilight's Hammer forcibly seized the Dark Whisper Gorge from the Burning Legion demons, maintaining control over the territory, except for the Gates of Sothan, which fell to the Pit Lord Garnoth and his forces. Simultaneously, Mazdaril, once the revered abode of the Blue Dragonflight, underwent transformations too. After the shattering, Umbrant the Spirit Speaker, a human mage driven by an unquenchable thirst for power, asserted control over Mazdara. It was revealed that Umbrant had been amassing magical artifacts, including dragon essences and the notorious Crystal of Zimbalor, and he was doing so to augment his own strength. As Mazdaril succumbed to Umbrant the Spirit Seeker's influence, the Blue Dragon Harle relocated to near the entrance of the caves, establishing a small camp known as Beryl Egress. Subsequently, she sought the assistance of adventurers in her mission to eliminate Umbrant and to reclaim their ancient home. In a tidbit of lore, exactly one year before the Cataclysm, following the culmination of the Nexus War and the demise of the Blue Dragon aspect Malagos, Hala emerged as the sole surviving consort of Malagos. She was the first to achieve the unprecedented feat of outliving a dragon aspect marking a significant shift in the balance of draconic existence. An aspect of the Winterspring tale that we haven't explored yet is the story of the Winterspring Frost Sabres. Within Winterspring's mysterious embrace lies a secretive faction exclusive to the Alliance, known as the Winter Sabre Trainers. The keeper of the Winter Sabre lore in these frosty lands is Riven Frostwind. A figure of mystery, Riven contributes a unique thread to Winterspring's tale, yet for an adventurer aligned with the Alliance, walking the path of honour, an opportunity unfolds. As the journey through Winterspring progresses, and respect is earned, Riven Frostwind's favour may be gained, presenting a chance to obtain the coveted reins of the Winterspring Frost Saber. This mount, a marvel in its own right, inspires tales of renowned wonder, a testament to the valour and camaraderie nurtured amid Winterspring's snowy landscapes. Embarking on our exploration of Winterspring, we uncover tales woven through time, from the ancient city of Keltheril to the enduring legacy of the Blue Dragonfly. The Timbermore Firbolgs emerging from seclusion, working to heal the scars of Felwood, their traditions symbolising a beacon of hope, delving into cataclysmic events, dark plots by the Twilight's Hammer, and the power-hungry Umbrance the Spirit Speaker, we find ourselves immersed in a narrative spanning epochs. Everluck, a vital resupply hub, serves as the gateway to Winterspring's mysteries, where adventurers seek riches, armour and knowledge. The goblins, in their pursuit of Arcanite, reward those negotiating with the territorial blue dragonfly. Our journey spans eons, from the War of the Ancients to the aftermath of the Cataclysm. As we conclude, may your future adventures be as captivating as the tales spun within Winterspring's snowy embrace. Until our paths cross again, May your travels be safe, and may the magic of discovery accompany you always.